This is Glenn Hughes, the voice of rock, and you're listening to Music Mania. You ready for some screaming heavy metal? We rock! But the evil that men do lives on. We gonna bang your You are now listening to the Music Mania Podcast, brought to you by CD Warehouse in Gladstone, the number one hard rock podcast in the Midwest, featuring hard-hitting interviews with rock's living legends. And now, here is your host, Clint Schweitzer. You are locked and loaded right here on the Music Mania Podcast. I'm your host, Clint Schweitzer. Of course, we always appreciate you hitting that subscribe button on YouTube or iTunes, either way you choose to take in the show. We have a big guest this week. We're going to be revving it up with drummer Roxy Petrucci. Of course, you know her from Madam X and, of course, Vixen. We're going to be going back to the old days, back to the 80s, talking about how crazy things were for the band coming up, touring with bands like Ozzy Osbourne, Bon Jovi, Kiss, and the Scorpions. Uh, she really is so open and honest about everything that the band's been through. We're going to go back to 2004 and uh, how important uh, the VH1 Bands Reunited show was for them, kind of getting them in a room and playing again together. And um, obviously things weren't always rosy in the Vixen camp. But now how they are continuing it on in the name of Jan Kuhneman, uh, the guitarist who founding member who passed away back in 2013. She and Cher and Janet are really forging ahead, keeping the Vixen name alive. And of course, Roxy's also been involved with uh, Madame X, who released their second album back in 2017. It's Monstrosity. It is hard hitting. It is in your face. It is absolute metal to a T. Roxy's going to talk about that, the different styles playing with in, in a metal band like Madame X versus Vixen. And we're going to go back and, and hear a lot of stories uh, from the old days. Uh, I'm going to talk about how um, vocalist Janet Gardner from Vixen was sidelined for a while. She had brain surgery. And uh, the show I was at back in March, uh, they played with Kicks at the uh, Choctaw Casino down in Durant. And they played uh, Lorraine Lewis from Femme Fatale. Uh, was the vocalist, uh, the guest vocalist on that show. And we're going to talk to her about uh, how that came about and uh, what it was like, you know, playing those shows without uh, Janet, who's been obviously such an integral part of, of Vixen for so long and and uh, the signature voice of Vixen. But she's back. The band has several tour dates lined up over the summer, and you can check those out at vixenofficial.com. Uh, they got a show coming up in Sweden Rock, uh, and Roxy's going to be pulling double duty with Madam X and Vixen there at Sweden Rock before they come back to the States for a few shows. And then they go to Belgium, to Germany, Spain, and before coming back to the States for a few shows to round out the summer and fall. So always look for Vixen. They're always out there, always doing their thing. They are reinvigorated with uh, guitarist Brett Lightning, who's, you know, again, helping them carry on, you know, what Jan Kuhneman helped found uh, with this band Vixen. And going all the way back, I remember Vixen being featured in the movie uh, Hard Bodies. When, uh, I'm such a fan of, you know, those teen beach sex comedies from back in the 80s. And Vixen was uh, a part of that movie. Uh, they were in the movie, I believe, called Diaper Ash, which is always funny. And then before changing their name to the Hard Bodies in the, in the movie, and then gaining notoriety with uh, their self-titled debut. Songs like Edge of a Broken Heart, Crying, Love is a Killer, their second album, Rev It Up, How Much Love. There was just a lot of great songs that came from this band in a, in a short span of time, and now uh, the hits live on, and thank goodness that they do. Uh, always respect what, uh, what Vixen does, and Roxy as a drummer. This is our second time talking to her. It's been about a year and a half since the early incarnation of the Madame X Monstrosity album, and now we're lucky enough to, to go ahead and bring her back. But before we do, I've got to tell you about our sponsor, CD Warehouse in Gladstone, Missouri, for over 22 years, a staple of the Northland. I tell you, I bought 95% of the music I still own today from CD Warehouse. Tell the owner, Randy Ringer, that Music Mania sent you, and they will give you a discount, or it's on us. Remember, guys, CDs, DVDs, vinyl, and more. They buy, sell, and trade. This is CD Warehouse in Gladstone, Missouri, a staple of the Northland for over 20 years. Hey, Roxy, it's Clint. How you doing? Hey, Clint. I'm doing... I'm crazy, actually. Well, going crazy. <laughs> I was not going to go there. That was supposed to be later on. We were going to uncover that later. Roxy, I would never agree to that. You're, you're, you're the best, though. It's been a while. It's been like two years since we've had John. How are you? Two years? Is it really? Uh, uh, right around there. Did you say two years or one year? It's a, 
it's like right in between, like a year and a half. It was right before, it was before Monstrosity came out from Adam X. Oh my God. You oh said, my God, it feels like yesterday. Isn't it? We just talked yesterday. <laughs> Man, this... Well, that's what happens, you know, when you're busy, it's just kind of like, oh my God, oh my God. And you... What the hell's going on? We're extremely busy, and you have a couple weeks off here, and then you'll be, you know, doing this, uh, I don't know, this show called Sweden Rock. I hear that's that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, you're you know, over this, there. This, 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 it's just a little intimate gig of about 20,000 people <laughs> plus. <laughs> yeah, Sweden Rock. We're totally psyched. Um, you know, I'll be doing double duty with Vixen and Madame X, which is going to be wild. Just like, bring it. I'm ready. I'll be warming up with Vixen, and then I'm ready for Madame X. That's insane. Um, that is crazy that you're going to do that. That's so cool, though. That's going to be a great one. Have you guys ever done Sweden Rock before? Yeah, Madame X played Sweden Rock in 2014. Wow. That was that was the kick in the ass that we needed to realize that we wanted to get back together and really do this for good. The, um, yes. You know, we, had, we had that single 80s rock song, and uh, we got the offer for Sweden Rock. We're like, yeah, sure, we'll do that. And then once we got on stage together, it was like, yep, yeah, this feels right. This feels like we picked up from, you know, 30 plus years ago. It, it, it just felt good. It felt right. Isn't it so, unbelievable? Um, it's so, that there's still an appetite for ba- you know not you know Madam X. You know you guys had one album you know back in the '80s, and then it's like you still there's still an appetite for these type of bands. And I say the same thing about a band like, and I know you know her really well. We're going to talk about her about Lorraine and uh, like Femme Fatale, who had one album in the '80s, and yet there's still this appetite for the for these type of bands. And you, and you want yeah, up, you know, it's so cool. It's it just like it, it's like it, it strikes a chord with people, and and they they they're your loyal fans, and they. They want to hear from you. Um, so, you know, if you can give it to them, give it to them. And, and we're here to give it to them. <laughs> give it to them good. Thank goodness for that. Uh, and you... Speaking of Lorraine, I love her, by yes. the way. I mean, her and, she and I worked together on a project back in, um, I think, 2006, 2007. It's called Rocktopus. Um, I don't know if you were aware of it, yes. but really, we, we had like a little EP together, and, and we just had a blast together. And, and her and I, you know, she's family. It's just like a rock and roll community. And, you know, when Janet had her um, brain injury, she, uh, Lorraine filled in and, and she knocked it out of the park. So, uh, thankfully, you know, she was available to do that. So yes. we could, could keep going on. I was going to bring that up because uh, I was at that show, of course, at the at the Choctaw Casino uh, in, in down in uh, Duran, Oklahoma. And it was an amazing venue. And you know what? We had... You and I had kind of text back and forth a couple times because I, I really was trying to kind of get out of you. Like I know Janet's kind of is, is still kind of under the like what's what's going to happen here. I know at the Monsters of Rock cruise you'd use some some guest singers like Terry Illus and a couple guys, but I was like, what's this going to be? I don't think anyone quite knew when you took the well, stage we what was going to be. You know what? We weren't we weren't sure, but we yeah. wanted her to be a hundred percent. You know, Janet is family, yeah. And we said, you know what? You need to be a hundred percent because we're going to have a busy summer. So if it means just missing one gig, just miss this gig, that's okay. You know, Lorraine was uh, ready and willing to, to, to fill in to help out. Um, so we did not want to take that risk because we just, you know, we just didn't want to take that risk. It's like it was one show. It's okay. And um, like I said, Lorraine did a great job. And Janet is back. She's 100%. And um, we're, we're ready to rock this summer. That's so great. And I tell you, I, I was... I'm mean, such a huge fan of of, uh, of Vixen and, and of course of, of Janet's vocals. I thought, and I'm also a huge Femme Fatale fan, so I thought like Lorraine coming out. And it was one of those things that for a second I was like, that kind of looks like Lorraine from Femme Fatale, but I don't. It can't really be. <laughs> and then when you introduced yeah, once her, we hit, once we bust into uh, waiting for the big one, yeah. then you knew it was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you introduced her, and I was like, "That is exactly that's amazing." And she she did great, and it was a great set. You guys played with Kicks that night in an awesome venue down there, and what a cool deal! Of course, yeah, it's been a few months yeah, now. Yeah, we love playing with the Kicks guys again. Those guys are family. I yeah. mean, you know, it's, it's it's weird. It's like a whole different scene now. Back from the eighties, you know, bands were more in competition with the, with each other. Now, you know, two thousand eighteen, we're all like rooting for each other. You know, like you guys, we're still around. Thank God that we're still out there pushing that cool rock and roll that's timeless that's so the word we're, that's... you know it, it's really cool it's a really good feeling and when we did the uh, played on the cruise and janet wasn't able to do that and we had um um oh all these special guest singers they were just so 
gracious and and they learn the songs and you know and, and Janet's not the easiest person to cover because she she sings high but these guys did a great job and it, it just was it was just it was a lot of fun it was fun for us um, it was a nice little you know tribute for Janet and yeah, all in all it just turned out great and it could have been better I loved I've checked out some of the videos from that because I was wondering what you know on Monsters of Rock what that was going to look like and I see guys like Terry Illus from Great White doing Cry In and uh, Danny Vaughn from Taiketo I think did How Much Danny Love Danny was great too and oh just, my he, god Danny was great just hearing the mail uh, Terry, was, Terry was great I loved doing um, the Dio song with him and um, you know what was really funny was Tame Me Down yes he was hilarious and you know he had laryngitis and he still came up and he's he was great it was just so much fun just so much fun brett kaiser from madamax madamax he came up he did a song so it was just uh, you know it was what rock and roll was all about together when you need it and now you guys have about 15 16 shows coming up over the summer and you're kind of spanning the globe you're going over to do sweden rock and you come back we're doing sweden rock we're doing barcelona we're doing germany we're doing belgium uh, I think Paris might be in there too. I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, we're going over to Europe. Then we're coming back here. We're doing the whiskey. We're doing the whiskey in LA, which is our stomping grounds. Um, playing in Arizona. We're doing, and we told our agent too. He said, dude, fill it up. We yeah. want to be out there working the summer and fall. So. Yes. We're going to be hitting it hard. We're yep. going to be hitting it hard. And that uh, you can get all the dates at vixenofficial.com. You can see all, all the tour dates there. Make sure you catch catch you guys because I swear, like, and, I, you know, another cool thing about this, too, is I think that um, someone like Cher, uh, who's singing some songs in the set, she did, like, uh, I Don't Need No Doctor, and she's, you know, getting, she. I didn't realize just how great of a voice she had, too. She's, she's awesome. She's really good. She, you know, she has her own record out with yeah. her husband, Bam Ross, uh, Twin Flames Radio. They have something that just came out. Uh, right after Madame X, they came out with something. So, I mean, we all have our little side project with Janet's solo thing, me and Madame X, and Cher with Twin Flames. And it was perfect timing, too, because, you know, Vixen was, um, you know, we didn't play as much in January, February, March. So that was perfect timing for us to, to do our little side project. Now, summer, we're going to hit it hard. We're going to be pushing our own CD because we have a live CD coming out with two special uh, bonus tracks, that our uh, studio track. And um, we'll be pushing that. So kind of all worked out in our favor. <laughs> that is so cool. I can't wait to see this list because that, you guys don't have really any, much uh, as far as live stuff, official stuff put out. That's going to be awesome from from. Oh, Vixen. it's going to be great. Yeah, and you know, and we, we, it's, it's Britt Lightning, our new guitar player. She's fairly new. So um, getting to play with her, now we can get more comfortable with her. So then on our next CD, it'll be, you know, pretty much all original Vixen stuff. She's great. We love her. You just got to make sure you don't lose her to, to like Alice Cooper's band or something. He, he po- he's poaching all the good female <laughs> know, guitarists. Right? He's poaching. <laughs> he's poaching all these girls. <laughs> no, I think she's pretty she, She's pretty happy with the Vixens. And she's really once good. You, once you become a Vixen, you're a, you're a Vixen. She's awesome, too. I, I, I'm very impressed with her. And, like, I know she's quite a bit younger, but it's. I, I'm telling you this, not just to kiss your ass at all, Roxy. You guys all look so good. It's like you guys look like you're all the same age up there. It's unbelievable. You guys all look we're great. All basic, we're basically the same age. Remember, in rock and roll, you don't age. So That's right. I, I can tell you whatever I want. I, I, I feel 28, so I'm going to say I'm 28. Stick to that forever, you bet, and you can pull it off. <laughs> I feel it. So I am it. <laughs> I, want, I want to ask you too. It's just a number, right? It's just a number. <laughs> it is. And, uh, if, you, if you think you're old, then you are old. That's right. And like I said, you just stick stick to one and, and stick to that number forever. And you know, I want to ask you too because you know, wh- right the last time you came on, we were talking about Monstrosity. And you'd sent me over the title track, and I was like blown away how heavy this was. And I want to get into it a little bit because you know this came out I think back in October. Just talk about the reception uh, for this album because it is heavy kicks ass like i mean it's like it really blows you away how heavy this album is talk about what the reception's been like for it so far oh we're in fact people are pretty blown away by it i mean they didn't expect that but that really is who madam x was and is we been way back back in the day uh high in high school was something that we wrote right correctly uh, Chris and Brett wrote that, but live, if you came and saw the band live, we were heavy as shit. We were like Judas Priest heavy. Um, 
when we signed with Jet Records, they told us, we want you to continue to write songs like that. You know, we had Metal mm-hmm. in My Veins, we had Stand Up and Fight, the heavy stuff, but, but that was it. They wanted more of that kind of stuff, so we obliged. But Madam X, in our heart, is what you're hearing now, Monstrosity, Resurrection. We still have stuff like Die Tryin' and Hello Cleveland, which is, which is that vintage Madam X, you know, the stuff that the Madam X fans who love that, that campy stuff. We have that in there because that's still part of us, but we are metal. So that's what you're hearing, the real Madam X. That's who we are. And uh, we're pretty proud of this record. I mean, it was two years in the making, but I think um, I think it was worth the wait. And the fans who have bought it so far are just really, really excited about it. Well, and, and, you, you know, we just shot a video for it, too. So we're, we're yes. in the process of editing that. And um, we have Sweden Rock coming up. So we'll be playing a lot of that record live. And you had the backing so, of EMP Label Group, which is Dave, Dave um, David Ellison from Megadeth, his, uh, his record label, and that that's so many great bands on this thing, and that's huge to have that backing. Pardon me. The the EMP, you're on the EMP Label Group with uh, that's yes, uh, we're Dave on the Ellison. EMP. Yeah, now we, all we need is to open up for a Megadeth. Yes. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> wow, it's on. It's happening now. Next without with Madam with Megadeth, that would be quite a lineup, don't you think? Yes, I'm in on that. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have metal in our veins. Still do. Still do. That's great. And, and you know what? We just we just touched the surface. You know, I mean, Maxine and I are, are writing some more stuff right now, as a matter of fact. If we don't do it with Madam X, we'll do it with um, our VRP after, sh- after show. It's a side yeah. project that we have. Uh, but yeah, we just, you know, we just got that itch. It's like, I don't know where it came from, but, but we're, we're just feeling really creative. Which is awesome. You got so much metal to, to give. This, t- what, what about the styles? Because the, the, the styles are vastly different, you know, when playing, playing, and just talk about as a drummer. I'm not a drummer. So talk about as a drummer just playing. I mean, to me, it's it's pretty simple. It's like, man, when you're playing that Madam X stuff, it's fast, it's up tempo. Vix is maybe a little more, a little, a little, just a little slower. I mean, you have a lot of, a lot of, you know, hard driving songs like Rev It Up. But talk about the style changes, you know, playing in these two bands. Yeah, no, 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 and, and I love that, too, because that just makes me a better drummer. Uh, Vixen takes a little more finesse. Madam X is um, pretty heavy, straightforward, but it takes a lot of endurance. Um, so, you know, it keeps my feet. I mean, I'm doing a lot of double bass. I'm, I'm slamming. i, I got to hit hard to play over Maxine. Maxine has her Marshalls on 11, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play heavy, and I love that though because I truly that is where my heart is. I have metal in my veins, always have, always will. Black Sabbath was my, they're my gods. I love Sabbath. I love Judas Priest. That's what got me going. So that's me. That's who I am. Vixen, I love playing with Vixen. I love it, it, the, you know, I was a jazz drummer too. I played jazz. Before I did, uh, you know, I did metal, but I also delve into to jazz. Vixen is hard rock. As a drummer, you should be able, to, uh, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, you should be able to do to be able to play all of that. Yeah, that's that's how I feel. I mean, I would, you know, I just to make myself a better drummer, to be able to to cross those genres is, is great. It's awesome for me. Well, it's a what, feel thing too. With yes. Vixen, I, you know, playing in the pocket, I love it. Well, you get a and lot. I, add, I think I add that edge to the band. Yes. Yeah, and that's it is, and you know, you you are one of those drummers that like you. I've always said like a drummer is a backbone of any band, and I think that you stand out as that uh, almost more than any. That, that that sound comes from from you. It comes from from uh, in the back, and it just it just it's just like a wall of noise, and that's what you definitely help create. And I want to ask you this because I went back and was watching some. Um, I was watching 2004's VH1's Band Reunited with Vixen, and I and I'd forgotten all about that this existed, and I, I caught that. And it just kind of brought me back to the time, and I, I just want to get your thoughts on on that show, what it was like uh, filming it and actually doing it, and how how much of it was genuine. You know, we wanted to get back together and do this because I know it was at the time where uh, you guys were kind of split off, Jan kind of doing her thing. You guys were, you know, it wasn't you know the the best time for you guys, and then you, then you did come together and do this, and it seems like that really might maybe help heal some wounds. Just give me your memories of, of that show. It did. Yeah, it did, because we hadn't seen each other in years. So for us to get back together and be in the same room, and there was just that that heartfelt love for each other, no matter what happened in the past, 
you know, you as years go on, you grow, you mature, and then you look back and go, God, that was stupid, that was dumb what I did. But but you, you put that all behind you and you just go, you know, I just, I love this person. We went through a lot together and and it's just great to be in the same room together. You know, I don't, I don't know that everything got healed in that, that one session, but we did, we did come back together and we realized like, wow, we had, what an experience we had together. And if we had the chance to do it again, we would love to do it again with this four, with the four, the original four. It was yeah. just a great experience. And, and yeah, a lot of it was, um, I, I think that they did capture what was going on at the time. I don't think, uh, you know, VH1 did a good job. It wasn't, there wasn't any weirdness or anything as far as editing or anything. I mean, it, it was what, it's, what it was. Yeah. It was kind of uncomfortableness and they showed it. Um, and it was there and it was there for everybody to see, but we got past it. And once we got on stage, it was like, yep, that's Vixen. And we just looked at each other and went, wow, you know, it feels great to be back with, with you girls again. Yes. And we all left parting ways going, yeah, you know, even if it, if it doesn't happen again, it's just great to see you guys again. And let's, let's keep in touch. And, you know, we're sisters forever. Mm -hmm. And it did, it did happen some, again. Yeah. And that's it did happen. Yeah. Yeah. Important <laughs> yeah. too. And I, that's for the legacy of the band and, um, obviously, you know, if, if for those, you know, few listening that maybe don't know that, you know, Jan Kuhneman passed away back in 2013. And um, obviously it's been important, I think, for you guys to, to, to continue on. Just what's that? Because personally for you, I mean, you when you guys continue on from, from 2014 to now, you guys have, have, have continued and really playing a lot, playing and keeping this together kind of in Jan's name. I mean, how important is that? For you guys very, to maintain that. Very. That is, that is yeah. one of the main reasons why. Jan and the fans. Without yeah. the fans, you know, there's no reason to continue because either they want to see you or they don't. Um, Jan, because her whole life was Vixen. She started Vixen. She, she, she worked so hard to build the reputation of Vixen and to keep this band going. I mean, and she saw this as, you know, endless. So it was kind of our job to make sure that her dream came true because it ended too soon for her. Yes. You know, life yeah. is just, it's just not fair. It's not fair, but, you know, we, we, we talked about it and talked about it and we, we consulted with her family and friends and it's like, you know, should we continue? And it was just kind of like a unanimous, of course. Yeah. You know, DeVixen is Jan. It's her legacy. Mm -hmm. And it's still living on, of course, and you guys still playing at such a high level. And, you know, you know real yes. quick. And, I, and, and, and even on our Facebook page and our on our, um, our website, yeah. we will always include her as much as we can. You know, we'll just put old pictures up or, you know, things about Jan because you have to because it, it just goes with her. Jan is Vixen, so... It's a reminder. It's like, you know, and, and the fans never let us forget either. So, you know, they're always bringing up Jan. So she, she's, you know, she's like Janet says at every show. She's with us with every every note we play, mm -hmm. every every note she sings. Jan is there. Very important. Very important stuff. And I Very, you, yeah. It, it is. We're, you know, and, and I was close with Jan. So for me, it's just kind of like, uh, it's a no-brainer. It's like, we, we got to keep this going. For her, have to. Yeah, thank goodness for that. I think that it's really an enlightening, even new people, new fans, uh, and that's happening at all times. Anytime you play a show, you're you know you're you're gaining new fans, people that haven't seen you before. Yeah, that's yeah. You know what's you know what's great too is is like we do meet and greets after our show. We'll go out to the merch table and we'll just sign whatever you got a little ticket stub or you know you want t shirt pictures whatever. We'll sign and we talk to everybody. And there'll be fans that had seen us with Ozzy or Deep Purple or Kiss, you know, 30 years ago, 25 years ago. And they'll bring their kids, and it's just like all these new Vixen fans <laughs> are coming up now. And it's just really inspiring, you know, or we'll yes. have... You will have girls and guys saying, you know, I'm playing guitar because of you, or I'm, you know, playing drums because of you. you Janet, you're an incredible singer. What do you, it's just, that makes it all worthwhile. All the, playing in a band is great, 
there's a whole another side of it, which is the bullshit side of it, the business side of it, which is pretty tough. If you can endure that, you're, you're golden. But it all comes full, full circle when you're standing in front of fans, who some who will actually cry when they're talking to you. And it's just like, do I have the best job in the world or what? It's just incredible. Yeah. That... There's, you know, if I find myself complaining, I'll just go, stop it. <laughs> you know, stop it. I have the best job in the world. There's no whining in rock and roll. Yes. You've just summed it up perfectly, too, because it shows, and I mean, I've always, I've said this to so many, you know, guests we've had on the show, and it just shows how there's nothing else like music that connects people so like this. I mean, there's it's just It's universal. Yeah. It's universal. It's it music touches everybody. I don't care where you live, what part of the country you live, what outside of the country. It's universal. It's it's just uh, it brings people together. And this has been, you know, going on for uh more than 30 years uh for Vixen and I wanted to touch briefly on on that because I wanted to go back back in time to the 80s, my favorite decade for for pop culture, for music, for for everything. I love the 80s. I'm the 80s person. I'm only 34. I was born in 84. I was born the year Hard Bodies came out, which uh you, you were Janet. Wait a minute, 84? <laughs> 84. You were born in 84? Yeah, yeah. I was that's 84. That's when I signed a record deal with Madam X was 84. Yep, and that's when Vixen without you in the band, yeah, they were in the movie Hard yeah, Bodies, which I is I joined <laughs> in 84. Five. Yeah, I yeah. joined in eighty five. I auditioned for David Lee Roth in eighty five. Around the same time. That would have been interesting. I would like like to have seen that pairing right there. Yeah, God, I wish I would have had a. I wish I would have filmed it back then. But you know, we didn't have the cell phones out in your face every second. But that, yeah, that would have been that would have been big, and it's you know, but you know, <laughs> oh, life. Yeah. Happened. Hell yeah, it would have changed things quite a bit. But you know, you can't. You know, you know, you don't want to change history because uh, you know that's things work out the way they're supposed to. But I wanted to ask you too because. 1988, the, the debut came out, but you guys had already been gaining some ground by 85, 86. Started recording the album, I think, in 86. Talk about how things changed for you guys, because it seems like really quickly, the debut comes out, you're opening for Scorpions, for Ozzy, you're playing with Kiss, Bon Jovi. Talk about how things changed for you guys at, at that time. Well, you know, we didn't notice it because we were so busy, but once once we got off the road and came back home and then heard Edge of a Broken Heart on the radio... And then once I started getting uh, noticed, recognized in the malls, then I was like, okay, something's happening here. Yeah. <laughs> but hearing it on the radio, I had to pull over. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> That's not on the radio. I mean, it was, I can't, I can't put it into words. The excitement and just the thrill and just the, the like, yeah, I think we might have made it. <laughs> this is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> um, but but you don't notice it when you're working because you're working so hard and you're over in another country and you're just jamming and playing every night. You come back to the states and then you're you're you reap the benefits. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. This this is what it's all about. And then you start getting the checks and you're like, oh, even better <laughs> bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bank account, that's one thing that that definitely changed. And, yeah, <laughs> and but you guys had to prove yourselves. You had to but prove you know yourselves. What? It's, it, but, but in the big picture, it's not so much about that because when you're on stage, that's really what it's about. It's, mm-hmm. it's When you're on stage and when you're meeting the fans, that in the end is what it's all about because that's what keeps you going. It's not about the money because I'll, I'll tell you, today, it's, you know, money... You don't get the money you made back then. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different puppy. It's a whole different world now. So, yeah, it's about loving what you do and, and the fans appreciating what you do. And you guys had to prove yourselves, though, night after night back then because there's there was legitimately people, maybe, you know, you know guy people in bands that you maybe were even touring with that, that thought maybe that you guys were a gimmick. That you weren't oh, even... yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah. It was still... You know, back in the 80s, it was still pretty much a novelty to see uh, an all-girl band playing hard rock. Yeah. There were not very many. Um, so I think being a girl attracted attention, but the credibility side of it was, 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 it was hard to gain credibility. You had to actually, it's almost like they wanted to see me do flips and twirls and all <laughs> that just, just to impress them. Oh <laughs> you know God. what I mean? It's like we had to go over and above what anybody else had to do just to prove anything, but we didn't give a shit. It was like, look at, we're rocking. 
this is what we want to do. We don't care what you think. Either you like the songs or you don't. If you don't, don't buy it and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we're just, we're a rock band, just like everybody else. That's, so, and, that's a you t- know, and maybe the guys in Poison, maybe they, they wore their makeup better than we did. <laughs> but other than that, you know, we were pretty, pretty good looking chicks playing hard rock and we could, we were actually we could actually play our instruments. Was that hard though? Because you know now we're you know we're in a we're in a hashtag Me Too movement. Did, was, being four good-looking women playing with with men, being in, in especially you know opening for bands like Scorpions, Ozzy, you know predominantly male audiences. I mean, was it just was it was it hard? Did you get a lot of weird circumstances? A lot of guys. I mean, was there creepiness, weirdness? I mean, did that happen quite frequently? Or was it kind of you guys were kind of sheltered from that? Not at all. Not That's at awesome. all. That's good fact, to hear. I think because because we earned a, we earned our our spot. Playing all those gigs and playing live is the only way that we could squash those rumors of oh they have tapes playing behind them or you know there's a guy behind the curtain or whatever. No, we were actually playing. They saw that we were actually playing, and and word of mouth is huge. And the word got out that this band really can play their instruments. They're really that talented. Uh, they're worth seeing. And and Ozzy and the Scorpions and Deep Purple, they treated us with the utmost most respect. We had no problems there at all. And they were a great learning lesson for us because we would stand behind the curtains and watch them every night. And we learned so much from all those mm-hmm. heavyweights. Yeah, that's you. Were, were you guys partiers at all, or was it, were any of you oh, married? Yeah. Oh yeah. Were any of you married <laughs> yeah. at this time, or yeah, were you we all had, single? We we could do it up. We definitely could party, um, but we you know we did everything in moderation. We knew we knew we knew our limit. Um, you know, sometimes we you go overboard, but hey, we were young. Uh, we had let me just say this: we had a good time <laughs> with all the bands that we played with. We had a good. time. <laughs> it leaves so much to the imagination. It's like, well, oh my God, were, were, were all of you single back then, or was anyone married at that point back in the early days? Um, let me think. We were single. We nice. were. I think Cher, Cher might have been married. Okay, yeah. Not, yeah, Cher was married, and then um, then not married. <laughs> See, that's what's but, up. Huh? That's great. Yeah, you, got, you have your fun time. You know, you all... She was what's... married before she joined the band. Though. Okay, okay. So Makes yeah, sense. and um, but other than uh, we were all single and just having a good old time. <laughs> and see, you got it all out of your systems, and now you're all in bed oh, by I'll nine tell o'clock. You something, something funny. Yes. When we were on tour with Kiss, Gene Simmons had the maddest crush on Jan ever. <laughs> 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 I mean, who didn't, right? I mean, she was a goddess. Uh-huh. Uh, and just like every band we toured with, they somebody in that band would always just fall in love with Jan. But he just was smitten with her, and he would, when we would go on, before the kiss went on, he stood in front of her, in front of the stage, and just stare at her. I don't know if he was trying to intimidate her or what, but she just, she's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> She didn't even like phase her, and I'm like, "Fuck, that's Gene Simmons." Just like, what? I think he may have even like, asked her to lunch or something. And she's like, um, "No, thank you." Wow. <laughs> that- <laughs> I mean, it was so Jan. She was so polite and just so classy. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, not many people turned Gene down back in those days. Is the rumor? Nobody turned Gene down. <laughs> oh God, that that's was awesome, funny. man. That's <laughs> funny. That's good. Oh, wow. You know, I, I was, um, you know, just getting getting very specific here. I was just watching some of the videos from uh, when you guys did the uh, the MTV Spring Break in Daytona, I think 1989. Um, what was that like? Because, I mean, that, that, that was just kind of getting started. There was just, MTV was just starting to do the Spring Breaks and stuff like that. That looked like just an amazing, fun time. What was that like uh, in Spring Break? Oh, my God. It was, I remember it was hot as hell. Yeah. I, I thought I was going to pass out. Uh, the crowd was immense and they were just screaming and they knew all the song, all the lyrics to our songs which was incredible because we had just released it not that long ago so we knew you know hey this 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 is we're on to something big here uh oh i remember yeah it was a really good lineup um it was just it was just a blast that's all i can tell you we had so much fun it was just so much fun it was just 
just a blast. But that's all I can remember. So I know we must have had a really, really good time because I barely remember all of it. <laughs> just blend. Are you sure you guys just blended right in with all the college co-eds and went on? And I can imagine. I can only imagine what what might have went on. That must have been. A lot of fun, like you said. We'll leave it at that. A lot of fun. You know, no yeah, details. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. The it details. was a lot of fun. A lot of it I don't remember. So <laughs> all I remember is what I remember. It was fun. Oh, well, that, you know what? And that's what Vixen is. It's just, and it's, it's such a fun, such a fun band. Well, was, you know what? And that's what rock and roll should be. It rock is. Rock and roll is built on, on having a good time and forgetting your, your, your reality. You come to a show and you're just like lose yourself for an hour and a half, two hours in this rock and roll circus. Yeah. And you just have a blast. And that's where we're at. We're, we're just at, when you come to our show, just have a good time. Don't worry about whatever's going on, you know, outside of this, this little world right here. Just for this two hours, just have a great time. Everybody needs that. Mm -hmm. And that's what the fans get. That's what people, you know, when you go to a show, that's what you get as a, as a fan. As, that's as what a I release. want when I go yeah. to a show. When I go to a show, that's what I want. I want to be entertained. I want to, I want to have a good time, and I want to love the music, and I want to just be tapping my foot and drop to my knees and, you know, just go, oh, my God, the girl is just incredible. I love this song. Oh, my God, this reminds me of, you know, when I was driving wherever with whoever, yeah. <laughs> doing whatever. Doing whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, oh, right? <laughs> that's so great. All right, Roxy, I tell you what, you're you're one of the best, you're one of the best, uh, you know, best drummers in, in rock. And, and that's, I mean that. And I've been a fan uh, for for so many years and growing up with you guys and it's just been great to be able to to have you on our show now for the second oh, time thank you Ooh. i enjoy talking to you and i and i wish i could have seen you in oklahoma we, yes. i'm sorry it was just you know it just was chaos so it, it was hard to get get everything logistically together so oh. i'm glad you made the show absolutely it was awesome and it's tough those days of the show i always uh you know anytime i got a band coming in or that i'm going to see i always you know if i if i text them early in the day i say hey if you have time it's fine uh if not that's fine too i know how hectic it is. and i think kicks had just like come in right off the plane or something they had a pl uh, uh, issue getting to the to the venue so they were just just getting off the plane onto the stage just about so that's oh, how hectic yeah, that can yeah, be yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Anytime we're near you, just let me know. And, um, you know, you're welcome to come and hang with us and, you know, be a vixenator for a while. <laughs> I, I am. I even, I, here's how I bought a shirt uh, in the last one. And it's a cool, it's one I hadn't seen before. It's like the Vixen uh, Motorcycle Club shirt. I bought that at the last show. I'm so, oh, cool. Cool. So, the Right to Rock shirt. It's awesome. I love that shirt. Yeah, it's like my, cool. Oh, right on. It's well, like my favorite one. Come you come. Hey, that is like, Roxy. I'll tell you what, we will catch you s soon. I can promise you that we'll we'll be out there and always be in touch. We got to do this. We got to. It can't be two years again. Can't go by before we do this again. No, 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 no. We'll do it sooner. And let me know, you know, when you come to a show, and uh, I'll try to point you out in the uh, or try to find you in the crowd and throw a stick at you and nail you in the head. Well, if I if I can catch it, you know, I, I was I was a football. I was a receiver back in my football days. I don't know, I don't know if I could catch a drumstick. Oh, stick, then you'll no. get it. You'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> hey. No problem. I don't want to poke your eye out. No, ex exactly. You know, there's lost. Suits. I mean, that's, that's, that's it's dangerous exactly. out there. Oh, uh, Roxy, you are the All best. Right, Clint. Well, thank you so much. I love talking to you. Thank you. You are the best. We'll catch you soon, my lady. All right, rock on. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. So great to catch up with our gal, Roxy Petrucci, one of my favorite drummers, one of the great female drummers in rock history, no question about it. From her sped up metal style of drumming in Metam X to her hard rock finesse style that you hear more in Vixen. She can do it all. She can play it all. And she still looks great. All of Vixen does. They look tremendous. And I think that's a big part of the success they're still having. Able to play, you know, the uh, the Monsters of Rock cruises. They're playing some of the festivals, playing with a lot of the uh, bands of the day. They're still out there doing it, and a mad respect for that. I tell you what, it is Memorial Weekend. We hope you guys are out enjoying a cold one, going to the lake, hanging out with friends, hopefully even enjoying some live music. That's going to be me. That's my life uh, for Memorial Weekend for sure. I've got Poison Friday night at the Sprint Center. That tour is just kicking off. Hoping to catch up with Ricky or Brett, a member from Poison, uh, for a future podcast. And uh, then on Saturday, heading to see Alabama. They're a band on my bucket list, a band I've always respected, been a fan of, and uh, going to go check them out for the first time at the Lake of the Ozarks here in Missouri, which is a beautiful part of the part of this part of the state, part of the country, one of the biggest man-made lakes in America. So going to be a great time. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. The hits just keep on coming here on, on the podcast. You guys know these songs, 
so well, like the back of your hand. But on this show, you're going to hear the stories, and that's what we're about here. Please hit us up on our Twitter, at MusicMania underscore show. If you have a feedback, a response, have a guest idea for us, hit us up there. But guys, you, your money stays and plays with us right here on the podcast all summer long, right here on the Music Mania podcast.